Let's right, everybody, well, welcome along to the Legit Crypto Lounge, the place that aims to bring together real projects with real people. For today's AMA, we are joined by Harry uh, from the Crocky Inu team. In terms of the structure for the next hour or so, we'll find out a little bit about the team in terms of their background and experience. We can have a look at the overview of the project, where they're at the moment, and where they plan to take this into the future. Uh, we can have a look at strip, strip away some of the details of tokenomics and pre-sale structure uh, and then open up to a Q&A before we have our giveaways at the end. So, Harry, before we get into the detail of the project itself, it'd be really good uh, to have a better understanding of uh, more about your team, who you are, who's involved in the team and, and your experience as well. Okay. So... Um... First of all, thank you for having us here. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about Crocky Eno. Um, a little bit to myself, I'm 30 years, uh, 31 years old. I'm involved in crypto space for around four years now. Um, I'm originally from Germany, um, so uh, please excuse any mistakes I make uh, while speaking in English. Um, yeah that's that's so far for me from my side um so our team we have basically uh, a core team which consists of uh, four members uh this is puppy he's our um basically he's our main developer then there's mike um jeffrey he's like our our head community um ambassador and there's me for um i'm i'm my role is as as an advisor and uh, my duty are communications in the amas and just connecting the right people yeah then um for the extended team we have uh, another four four people and uh, obviously some mods for the chat yeah that's so much for the team um our experience well, we all come from different kind of backgrounds. Um, we agreed as a team that we will not name any past project um, just for terms of anonymity. Um, we all worked on, on a lot of projects. I myself uh, been involved in a couple of projects last year, uh, this year, not so much because i took like a personal break for the last couple of months and now i'm getting back into crypto um puppy himself was involved in, in some good projects which reached well above 10 million market cap um yeah so we basically we came came together we met together in a, in a couple of projects we got to like each other and uh, that's when we decided, okay, now it's our turn. So okay, cool. we is came up with Crocky Eno. Is this your first project as a, as the a team, as it stands then? Yeah, this is our first project in, in this combination. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Okay. And what um, real world experience do you guys bring to the table? Uh, uh real world yeah you know for example uh, uh, are you any any of you got a marketing background or you know d development background um okay for me personally i'm a learned chef yeah so um what i can do is i i can talk with people yeah i got uh, in my in my real life job i got to know people from all around the world um, so I'm very good at connecting and, um, I just take puppy as our, as our main developer, uh, for example, uh, he's been involved in, uh, application development for the last couple of years and also local marketing. Cool. 
So, so yeah, basically, we, we got some good stuff on hand. Okay, Dave. Good stuff. Right, okay, let's um, let's get cracking with uh, Crocky then. Uh, do you want to give us a, an, an overview of um, what you're creating within, a project, within this project and what makes it stand out? Um, yeah, just give me a sec. Um, I'm just trying to find my presentation. Yeah, here yeah, I got it. Um, am I allowed to share the screen? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I was going to uh, share the website, but that's absolutely fine. Yeah, let me. Once you share yours, I'll stop sharing so that we can focus on yours. Let me just check if this is working. Can you see it? There we go. Yep, I can see that. Okay, so what is Crocky Inu? Um, first of all, everybody thinks Crocky, Crocky, this belongs to Kronos, right? Hmm. Um, it was our first intention in launching on, on Kronos chain, but then, well, the volume and the hype around Kronos, it kind of declined. Yeah, we had those, those couple of good weeks with uh, Crowd being first meme, meme token over there, which went really high, like above 50 million. And it obviously has pulled a lot of other projects to Kronos, uh, which was our main intention. But um, then we as a team decided that it would be best to um, stick what, with what we know, which is Binance. Yeah, we all know Binance, Binance Smart Chain uh, project. And um, this is just a space we, we know how to handle and what to do. And um, so, yeah, we decided to move the project to, to the BSC space. Um, just if anybody wondering why we got a crocodile um, <laughs> as a logo. Yeah, so what's next? Um, the main idea is that we all, well, at the time we were like, everybody was single from our group, yeah? So we were talking like, oh, I got a Tinder match here and I got a Tinder match there. I was on this app and on this app. And we all kind of had the same idea at the same time, yeah? We haven't seen any kind of dating app uh, crypto related. So you've got all, you know how Tinder works, yeah? You've got the swiping features and you, you can buy your premium um you know, your vip status for like monthly or, or yearly base or something yeah and then you just try to to get your dates uh your hookups or whatever so um what we were thinking is okay we're gonna create a dating app crypto related yeah and we're gonna we're gonna do the um do it the good way so um, let me just start with the basics here. Um, oh, I will start with, with the token allocation. So um, we will start with a 54% burn. Then we're going to have 10% in pancake swap, 10% uh, allocated in the private cell, 15% in the pre sale. And we're going to keep 10% for future CEX listings and 1% um, are for community giveaways, um, shilling rewards, those kinds of things. Is this, is uh, these um, percentages, are they on this presentation that you're sharing? Is that on slide two, just because we're on the main page at the moment? Um, when I was having a look at your website, the numbers don't seem to match up to what you're describing now. For example, when I looked at the white paper, there was no allocation for a sex list then. No, there's in the white paper, there's this allocation is not there. You're absolutely right. The, the reason for this is because as it says on the website, it's only V2, uh, V1 white paper. Okay. Um, 
shortly after the launch, uh, the white paper and the new roadmap is going to be updated. And um, yeah, that's why I'm telling you about this token allocation now, because for me, this is a very important thing. And um, yeah, in the white paper, you just find the tokenomics for now, which I will come to now in my next slide. Yeah, so we got a rather cheap 10% in, 10% out, which is uh, which divides in 4% uh, for marketing, 2% uh, team wallet, 1% goes to the liquidity, 2% goes to the native reward in truck, and 1% goes straight to the staking pool. Okay. Do you want to, oh. do you want to share, share this, um, share your screen as a slideshow so that um, anybody that's watching this back on YouTube and, and to be fair, anybody that's watching this on Telegram, yeah, that's it, so we, just so we can see each one clearly. Okay. Let's do it like this. So then um, we are in phase one of our project on our roadmap. We got the website live, we got first promotions live, um, pre-sale is gonna be live really soon. Um, right after pre-sale, we're gonna have the launch. Uh, NFTs is gonna be released, very limited uh, um, collection. Also sticking, gonna be live after launch really soon. Yeah, so this is still phase one. Phase two will be right after, and if I say right after, I mean just like one or two days. Yeah, we're gonna start with phase two. So um, yeah, we we're going full throttle on this one. As you can see, as I mentioned before, we got the new white paper. Um, obviously, CG, CMC listings, um, centralized exchange listings then you're gonna see previews on our dating app and lots and lots of more stuff so tune in then obviously um what's one of the most problems on bsc you want to answer me that <laughs> your opinion this is my opinion is uh, pl plenty of, plenty of problems. Uh, you fill me in on what you feel is the uh, the major problem. Okay, I, I'm so I'm not talking about the scammers or or like the rug pulls on something. It's that people people forgot how to hold. They don't they don't know how to hold. They they don't trust anymore. Yeah, you got a le legit project. With, with good plans, good developers, good team. And it just dies because people are not willing to hold. So you need, you need incentives for the, for the people to hold. Um, that's why we got the staking and the rewards. Yeah, staking is going to have a, a volume-based APY. So as I said before, 1% of, of the taxes is going to... Uh, to the staking pools, which means the more volume we get, the more lucrative the staking pools will be. And uh, then on the other hand, we got the 2% uh, reflection in Crocky. Um, so people profit on in two ways by just by holding and staking their, their token. Then and those are obviously both, um, like you just explained, uh, volume dependent, aren't they? Yeah, obviously. Um, of course, if, if there's no no volume, um, then where do I get my rewards from? Yeah, that's a point uh, which I want to come back to at a little later point uh, okay. when I talk a little bit more about the app. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned before, we're gonna have some uh, NFTs. We're gonna and I have a small collection of uh, 500 NFTs. So um, those NFTs 
will be basically like a stock in our app. Yeah, if you buy an NFT, you get a portion of the revenue just by holding the NFT. So obviously we aim for the app to produce some kind of revenue. Uh, is it via VIP services or is it via um, advertisements? And 25% of that revenue goes straight to the NFT holders. Okay. So you don't have to, end, to do anything with the NFTs. You don't have to put them in, a, in a, another D app. Uh, you don't have to stake them. Just hold, hold them and enjoy the rewards. So uh, I'm going to show you. How, are you going to have like different levels of rarity, things like that? Or is it going to be flat, standard, 500? And in which case, how much will they cost? Um, as far as I know, we will not have different levels of rarity, no. Um, let me get the exact price for you right now, but I have something like 0 0.5 BNB in my head. Um, the money which is being allocated by the NFT cell will go straight to the app development and the app marketing we all know the, the marketing is one of the most expensive things so it will it will cost a lot of marketing um yeah much, as you can see do you, do you anticipate do you, so, so 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 they're going to be 0 0.5 bnb each potentially and you're going to have 500 of those so 250 bnb worth um is that like is that the fund to develop the app then um well part of it um so the actual the actual development of the app will not cost more than ten ten thousand dollars um that's because uh the app developer is a well i just say he's a friend of of puppy and we get like a um good discount from him <laughs> um and as we speak, the app is already in development. Yeah. And we will share first sneak peeks next week after launch. Um, on this sheet, you can see, okay, this looks very much like Tinder. You've got your profile, you've got your, your X, your hearts, your boosters, whatever. Chat, chat function. Um, what makes us different to Tinder or just another dating app? On the, on the app store yeah um we thought of something unique which hasn't been there before basically and uh, so we are developing a tipping function yeah so you can you can tip on our app with our token and uh, you don't even have to register for a new wallet What's um because I I was I was looking at your white paper before and I came across this part about tipping. Um but it confuses me. I don't understand why why that feature would be beneficial and in what way it would be used. Um well this is this is one of the points uh we want it to be unique. And um like let's let's just say okay um you got to you got to know somebody and it didn't work out yeah you you don't you don't get to meet each other or whatever but you had a really good talk or something yeah, and you like the person and then well why not give him a little tip or something yeah because sometimes a good conversation is is also good in, in entertainment okay fair enough I've not, um, I'm just reading through the messages, somebody saying it's not, um, it's, it's not, not unique, it, but it's, uh, it's not really something I've ever seen before. Although I've, uh, um, been in a relationship too long to uh, not be able to get on to, uh, Tinder. It was, uh, after 
my relationship formed. But anyway, um, yeah, I've never seen a t- tipping fun- function before. It seems uh, strange. Okay, but may- may- maybe it's not unique, unique, but for crypto space, it is anyway. Okay, cool. So um, 10K to develop the app. So I I developed an app. Well, I, didn't, I didn't personally develop an app, but um, uh, I got developers to do it. And that cost me like 25 grand just to get it to yeah. um, a stage that was usable. And that was with plenty of bugs. And uh, it would have cost me a lot more to, to make it into something where you would get have a decent user base so i know you mentioned that you'd be able to do it 10k because you've got um you know a friend in the industry yeah and stuff. as i as i so mentioned before yeah. Pop, poppy has a lot of experience in app development himself and he's also working on it so he and his friend are working together and that's why we basically can do it for much less money and uh, we can spend the money otherwise uh, we can spend the marketing on the backend service, everything to run it smoothly on our service. And it's all, as you as you mentioned before, it all takes a lot of money. And it the the app itself is it going to be rebranded? Is it going to have different branding to to Crocky? Well, the app itself. As you see in the name, it will be will be called Elite Dating App. Okay, yeah, that's the name. And of it, will, it, it will be powered by Crocky Inu. Okay. Yeah. So um, basically, yeah, we we need the Crocky um, to run the dating app. This is the the reason for this is in many countries um, advertising crypto projects is kind of difficult or let's just say illegal in some countries too yeah Yeah. by running the dating app and having it being powered by a crypto project we basically bypass the laws and we can promote our crypto project in normy markets yeah we all we all so we all know crypto projects by itself. We, we are a small community in, in the crypto space for now. Yeah, we, we get more users every day. But you all know the same. We always see the same kind of people in the new projects. Yeah, you all, we always see the same people. And that's one of the issues be, uh, why so many projects fail because those projects fail to flush in outside money. Yeah, we need centralized money um, from outside the crypto space uh, to be flushed into crypto projects to make them really sustainable over a long time. And so um, we aim to market in in countries like Turkey and and the UK and other European countries. And um, as Turkey being one of our main markets, because it's got... um, um because puppy is from there and uh, he's got some marketing strategy for the universities over there for the young people and promoting crypto projects is illegal over there so promoting a dating app which is powered by a crypto project is a workaround for that okay makes sense yeah and we aim to flush in centralized money through the app into our project and make it sustainable. So, in way. Okay, okay. And yeah, you mentioned about promoting it and bringing in uh, people from outside of crypto and stuff. And, and exactly. And, and so we plan on plan on doing um, electronic posters and billboards close to several universities in Turkey and UK and obviously coming uh, to more countries uh, over time. And uh, yeah, so we... Where where will that take place though? Because obviously you've got to develop the app first, haven't you? And if you're promoting the app, 
you can't do this marketing until the app's been developed and launched, I take it. Well, the app is going to go live end of this month, the latest okay. in July. As I said before, it's already under development. Yeah, and we will start promoting it shortly before we go live with the app. Yeah. Until then, until then, it's like the market marketing routes we we know in this space. So we're gonna have Telegram marketing. We're gonna have AMAs. Um, we have some influences already confirmed. Um, but I'm not going to name them now because, you know, they, they don't like if we name them before they call them. Mm -hmm. um, so we already got some, some influences on board. Um, yeah, so the normal Telegram, Twitter, Instagram marketing. We're going to have Instagram ads. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay, so basically... Until the app is ready, you're going to obviously focus on crypto specific marketing, have that campaign. Exact, exactly. It, you got flip it. it. Flip it to mainstream once the app is developed. Yeah. Once, once the app is, is close to, to launch, we're going to start the, the normal, I just call it normie marketing, sorry. Um, the real world marketing with, with the billboards, uh, with the electronic posters banners um we're gonna talk to some tiktokers um we're already in, in dms with them planning a good um, video viral strategy for the app um yeah cool okay so let's, talk, plan. let's talk about the the um money generating element of it then stuff uh i think you mentioned about uh, advertising within the app and stuff can you give us a, exactly. like a break a breakdown of um where you see revenue coming in and have you got any projections of, of what you think this can achieve and when so the main revenue will come from the premium feature and from the advertisements um wait i will just get an exact breakdown for for you Okay. So as I said, premium premium service and advertisements, and um, let's say, ah, my notes are a little bit blurry. I got writing like a doctor. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm old school. I, I I write it down by hand. Just right. give me a second here. I'm I'm very sorry. Okay, yeah, so the app will power our crypto project, basically, yeah. The more yeah. users we get on our platform, on the app, on the Elite Dating app, the better our crypto project will be. Um, this has two reasons, yeah. We all know um, people like to get the premium feature. Um, so they're going to have a couple of uh, different options if they want to do it monthly or three months or yearly. Um, I can't give you now an exact price if it will be, I don't know, 10 euros a month or like $50 for three months or something. We don't have that information yet. Um, also, I can't, I can't share... Uh, like a prognosis on the on the advertisement revenue yet um because we're gonna have to test it first um if, if yeah not, not looked into any projections or tried to, to make or look to your competitors to see what uh, um, revenue you can potentially generate from advertising that's actually a very good point there um let me just check with uh one second, please. Good. 
because all of all of this um, information is obviously really important, but not just. Yeah, uh, uh, to, I'm to absolutely, I'm absolutely with you on that one, and um, you caught me off guard there because uh, yeah, we talked about that before, but it kind of slipped off our minds. Um, I will. Um, we will get to get that information for you. Obviously, I just don't have it on my hands now. I'm very sorry for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah that would be good. It'd also be good for for looking at the NFTs and stuff. And if you're trying to sell those, people are going to want to know um, what they can potentially get in return for these NFTs. In terms of you, you, you mentioned, didn't you, that 25 percent of uh, revenue generated go back goes back to those nft holders so um exactly. it obviously be beneficial for them to understand you know what the potential is of, of that revenue yeah i will i will try to get the information until until the end of the ama no problem okay um right so, so yeah basically um yeah that's it for now um hit me with with more questions except revenue prognosis <laughs> <laughs> okay fine so you've said that the app is going to be developed and launch uh end of this month or july and stuff um exactly. in terms of the other things like the nfts the staking the rewards when are they going to go live so obviously rewards will be live with the first second yeah of course um because they're tax related um staking gonna come in the first week um i think even just first day um because also the uh, staking the app is almost completely done just last testing phase um so that will be first day and uh, the NFTs are going to come also in the first week. In the first week, okay. Um, just going yes. back to the app again, the dating app. Um, one of the most difficult things of launching these types of apps and making it grow and, you know, actually having users, people that actually use it, is getting that user base, growing it, it has to it almost has to explode doesn't it in order for people to want to use it and stuff so how do you plan to get that explosive you know growth in terms of the user base um so yeah our strategy for that is um i i just call it local marketing basically um we focus on spaces which are really um how do you say it in english pardon my, my bad english right now which are heavily used by the generation uh, we aim as a target for our app so what what do those people use they use snapchat we're gonna target uh, them on snapchat with ads we're gonna target them on instagram um we're going to target them, as I mentioned before, on TikTok. And um, we're going to just, um, we're going to put ads basically everywhere where young people are going and spending their free time on their mobile phone. Every social media platform, we're going to put ads. Um, then, as I mentioned before, we're going to do electronic posters. We're going to do billboards. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna do them on metro stations and in parks everywhere where young people are going. Um, we're also thinking of LEDs in, in, in football stadiums and whatever. You name it, we're thinking of it. Okay. Big, big plans means a big budget. Um, so this is all going to come through, obviously the initial NFT sale, part of that's gone through the app development and the rest is towards, a uh, good chunk of that is towards marketing and stuff. You've got your initial exactly. crypto focused um, marketing and then app focused marketing. What 
um, how much do you anticipate spending uh, on crypto versus the, you know, the app marketing? And, you know, how app, mar you app marketing going to be a, a bigger chunk than, than the crypto marketing because real life marketing is a little bit more expensive than the, what we used to in this space. Um, so we raised the 50 BNB in the private cell and aim to raise 150 BNB in the pre-sale. Um, so like 200 BNB in total just before launch. Um, yeah. Of the pre-sale, 60% will go to initial liquidity, which leaves us with initial marketing funds around about 80 BNB. Um, so we got the crypto marketing covered from that side. Um, yeah. yeah, and obviously from NFT revenue, uh, a good chunk will go into the uh, app marketing, as I said before. And yeah. Um, okay, and what's your target market? You said young people, basically. Well, My dad, for instance, he doesn't use he doesn't use his mobile phone. Yeah, so um, that kind that generation um, that's not our targeted group. Our targeted group are the people still going to school, going to university, just starting their jobs. Those people who basically spend their whole day on the smartphone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that younger generation and stuff, the name elite dating kind of um, makes me think about the professional market more. Um, so I didn't know whether you were going to try and target professionals, but it seems like it's... You mean hookers? People. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry for that. I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it can have that connotation as well, but no, I was thinking more along the lines of, like I said, professionals. Unless you are well, trying the to word, go down that the route, word and elite that's why you introduce the tipping element. The word elite makes something stand stand out, in my opinion. Um, people tend to look at something exclusive, which something which which looks exclusive. They they tend to click on it in our opinion okay because because it looks expensive yeah and um we all know how this glam and bling bling works yeah the, the more fancy it looks the better the better it gets yeah okay yeah fine let's um let's um Let's let's move on, and we can uh, open up to the Q and A at the end if people have got any more specific questions on on your app and stuff. So, um, you've 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 already touched on the tokenomics in terms of buy and sell tax, which is um, ten percent, isn't it? Yes. Um, two so two percent of that goes towards rewards. Um, do you think that you're going to be able to create enough volume from that two percent? to be able to give out meaningful, you know, rewards that will keep your investors holding? Well, obvi obviously it depends all on the volume and how people will adapt um, to our launch and um, how, uh, how progressive our marketing will be. Um, as I mentioned before, people, people can't hold anymore. Um, we want to make it as, as easy as possible for them to hold. That's why we want to we want to um, launch the app not like other projects promise, like in the same year or after a couple of months. We, we want to our our goal is to really launch it at the end of the month so that we just have a couple of a couple of weeks, um, which we find is a fairly reasonable amount of time. And um, so, yeah, we, we just want people to relax about their holdings. Obviously, if something goes down, yeah, everybody gets stressed out a little bit. That's why we also have to stay king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
but obviously if the stake if the if the volume is gone going down everybody's gonna stress out a little bit but we got plans and backup for that also um and by plans you mean marketing and obviously the app development in the background yeah and there you know we we can do buybacks and and stuff like that got some funds to work with okay and this one percent towards lp do you think that's um enough to you know try and help help stabilize and keep that solid chart well what we want in the beginning is uh, is a chart which can move yeah um so as i mentioned before 60 60 percent from the pre-sale going to initial liquidity um with the one percent tax on buy and sell it's a it's a two percent which being added on on buy and sells um to uh, to the liquidity this is just gonna make it a little bit volatile just as much as we want it to be so uh, with the right with the right marketing um with the with the right strategy um it should be rather easy easy to, to push it really high in a short amount of time and then at a later point um when we reach certain goals we're going to add more liquidity to the project okay and this pie chart that you've got here down below this isn't this isn't your token distribution no oh that's okay so that's the updated version. Um, let's talk about that then, because you've got 50, 54% burn, uh, massive burn. Um, when is that taking place? Is that already, that's already taking place, hasn't it? Yeah. What was the reason behind doing that? Um, well it's just a common meme thing basically you know it's it's very popular for meme projects um to do a big burn in, in the beginning people like it um in my personal opinion it doesn't it doesn't bring value just um we asked around a lot of people and they say yeah do a burn do a burn good we like it we like it we want to invest in projects to, to do a burn and uh, yeah so we did a burn i think historically um burns were, were a good marketing ploy but now i think it you know, people are more aware of you know the way that it can be misused hello? as well can you hear me okay hello can you hear me Hello, Harry, Harry. Can you hear me? Okay, Mark, you're coming through just fine, buddy. Okay, cool. Cheers. Oh no, uh, it looks like we've lost Harry. Hopefully, we'll be able to get him back, back in in a second. Let me just share my screen for the time being until he returns. Is it? Harry, there we go. We've got you back. Are you there, Harry? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes, we can hear you, Harry. Are you sorry? You I, don't know, I don't know what happened there. I just glitched out, kind of. Yeah, no worries. No worries. That's that's fine. We've got you back now. So that's the main thing. Um, yeah, I was saying yeah. that uh, pre previously. previously um you know burns were were a good market employee but now people have got used to it and realize that you know they could be misused as well to hide um token allocations for teams and things like that and stuff so what is the, no. the what is the team allocation uh, the team has spots in the private cell as anybody else along with uh, with the influencers we we got on board 
Um, so no, there's no allocation for the team. We don't have any official team wallets. Everybody got a spot in the private, so that's it. All right, okay. You, okay, let's have a look at these. Uh, BSC scan. Because... So the so the the burn took place most recently, and before that, you've you set up the rest of the the transfers and stuff. Um, can you take a, just take us through these um, wallets? Yeah, one sec. Let me just open BSC scan for myself so that I can click on them. Um, one sec. Okay. Oh, okay, let me crack it in. I need to load here. Okay, so the wallets, we got 54% as burn. Then, Then the 23.55%, that's the pre-sale. Pre that's the um, pre-sale and the, the liquidity combined. Yep, yep, yep. Then we have the third wallet as the uh, um, Private cell. Which is marked unlocked here, as I see on pink sale. It's still unlocked. Yeah, it's going to be locked, obviously. That's um, not 14 cent, yeah. Yeah. We have found, um, I haven't. No, oh, I haven't told you about the vesting schedule, have I? I'm very sorry. For the private sale, we got a vesting schedule. Yeah, that's right. We haven't really got to the private and pre-sale structure, so I'll I'll, I'll go on to um, I'll start asking questions about that in a second. Just um, what are these? What's the six percent and two point five percent? Two point five percent looks like it's lit, locked on. Yeah, two point five sh should be pink sale. No, wait a sec. Should be pink sale. I'm not completely wrong. Investing on pink sale. Uh, yeah, it has to do with our vesting schedule. Sorry for the confusion. So, sorry for both. Both, because yeah, both. When, you at, when you look at pink sale. So if you can you can you click on it on pink sale? What the yeah, that, five, that, there's this uh, locking. Yeah, the Not 25, locked. two lots of, two lots of 12 and a half million being unlocked, one on the 16th, one on the 19th. Those should be the 2.5%. Yes, so that's right. Okay.
Yeah. One sec here. I just want to get this info as, as correct as possible. I don't want to give you any wrong information on this one because it would sure. be fatal. Yeah, okay. So the 6% and 2.5% is all part of the private cell. Um, this is because, um, let me just show you the, let me find you. Our vesting schedule, one second, I will share my screen in just 30 seconds. Um, um, I got it here somewhere. Dead. So, um, there it is. Oh, let me share my screen. Yeah. Sorry, this take a little while, but I got it. Back. Just let me know when you're ready, and I'll stop sharing my screen. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share right now. Can you see it? Yes, there we go. I can see it. So, um, you can see that basically private sellers just get two thirds of the token on launch day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we have the, the 2.5 and the 6% wallet set apart for the different days, which are locked because, uh, as you can see, they, they get 200 feet. This is basically for one BNB in the private cell. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, to make it as easy as possible. So for your one BNB, you get 50% on top and, um, but those uh, fifty percent are locked. For up to six days. Um, okay. <clears throat> Looking at the um, going back to when your burn took place. Let me just share my screen again. One second. So the, the 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 burn took place after these were created. Um, so effectively, the percentage allocation is doubled, isn't it? Because you've got you created these like the private sale, the 25 million, then you did the burn afterwards. So effectively, you've doubled the allocation, plus your 50%. Yeah, so mm, I don't get what you're saying right now. Sorry. Can you we double that? So, so the, the, you've got the total supply, but fifty-four percent was burned after. The, so, the circulating supply is effectively doubled. Well, 
let's come let's come back let's come back to it let me get let me get an overall so in terms of the, the private um you raised 50 bnb is that right about yeah and how, now how many people took part in the private Um, about 50 people, I think 52 or 53, 59, 59 yeah, people. And, and did you have like a, a max buy into that? Mm, one BNB. One BNB, okay. Two BNB, I'm sorry, two BNB. Two BNB. Right. And then, so you've got the pre-sale coming up, which you're conducting on pink sale. Uh, what was the reason? Obviously, there's loads of launch pads these days and stuff. What uh, was what made you choose pink sale? Um, that's actually a very good question. Um, it makes people comfortable. I know there's been a lot of fud on pink sale, but um, for us personally. And uh, they've proven in the past that uh, they are good partners to work with. Okay, and uh, uh, presumably they're still um, wanting their two percent. Of... Well, now they don't. They don't collect uh, tokens anymore for for the fee. They just take BNB now. Oh, okay, I thought I thought that might. So be there's easy. there's now they they changed that uh, sometime. I think a couple of weeks back, um, so, so we don't have to fear the pink sale dumbs that it was in the past. So no, that's not going to happen. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, that's good to hear, um, and very bit sensible on their part not to be doing that anymore. So um, your soft cap seventy five B and B, hard cap one hundred fifty B and B, um, minimum buy in zero point two, max buy two. Um, sixty percent going towards LP. So, do you want to give us a breakdown of what the remaining forty percent is going towards? That's going to go all to marketing. And have you got any specific uh, things in mind for that? Well, um, is that already been allocated? Well, I can't give you a complete breakdown on every BNB. So no. obviously. We're gonna spend loads on on AMAs, um, Coin Gecko, so Coin Market Cap has to be paid. Um, we're gonna plan on be trending on Dex tools, um, Coin ads. Um, as I mentioned before, Twitter and Telegram marketing. So yeah, that that's where the money is going. Okay, and so moving moving on to launch then. Uh, when is that taking place? On um, the 14th. So it's on Tuesday? No, so 11 Wednesday. On the 14th is the pre sale. And that's on Tuesday. And 24 hours after the pre sales uh, concluded, we're going to launch. And if you fill quickly, are you still going to be launching on the Wednesday the 15th? Yeah, 24 hours after. We, we need the time for preparation. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and in terms of your contract, is that a fresh new contract that you've created or is it a fork? Um, yeah, no, it's not a fork. Um, it's been audited already, and yeah, it's fresh. Who's done the audit for you? Um, just a sec, Spywolf. So that's the company Traveler is working with. I think Sarah is working with Spywolf also. So yeah, they're not. I think it's it's also in the white paper. Okay, Spywolf, and then. Um... In terms of you guys, um, presumably you're not doxxed if you KYC'd with. Yeah. Like, yeah. Also, 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 uh, KYC and Puppy is uh, doxxed to our marketing partners. Um, we partnered up with uh, Brother Marketing, so Puppy is personally doxxed to them. 
and uh, KYC to um, Pink Sale and Spy Wolf. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just looking at your roadmap, uh, the listing on centralized exchange. Have you got any uh, specific centralized exchanges that you're looking to get listed on? Uh, Harry, you still with us? Sorry. Uh, I think my connection was cutting out there again. Uh, the last thing was listing on what? Uh, yes, yeah, centralized exchange. Have you got any specific centralized exchanges that you're looking to get listed on? So, yeah, we're, we're in talks with uh, Whitebit and Bitmart. Okay. We're already in contact. We're already in contact with those two, and those are the uh, at the moment are the only two ones we we're interested in. Yeah. Okay. I know the Bitbox is pretty expensive to get listed on. Depending on how many pairs you want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I think that leads me on to my final question then. Um, oh, Harry. thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I, th I think I've grilled you enough, haven't I? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's okay, man. That's, that's what these kinds of things are for, yeah? And it's good you ask critical questions, um, and I, I try to answer as good as possible. Yeah, the more I, oh. I ask you now, with it being the first AMA, at least you can uh, prepare the answers uh, succinctly for your following AMAs. So, the exactly, question, exactly. Yeah, the the question we always like to ask here at the Legit Crypto Lounge and finish up with is um, along the lines of trying to uh, understand your long term ambitions and and where where you see this project going and stuff. So. For us, the long-term success of a project can't be achieved without a clear vision from you guys, the project owners. So my final question to you is, at what point does this project become a success to you? Well, um, we want to we wanna, we wanna make it a big success, successful project, yeah. I know everybody's saying this um, for us, to make it a success is for it to sustain itself um, by ad revenue, yeah, so that we don't have to put uh, investors' money in anymore, like from the tax. So we can we can change taxes, we can lower the taxes. Yeah, um, in the in the tokenomics, we got the the percentage for marketing. Um, so that basically we, we take money from investors to reinvest in our project, yeah? And uh, talking of a successful project is when we can turn it down. And as I said before, the, mon the, the project uh, sustains itself. Okay, cool. And have you got any personal targets, ambitions for how many users you're going to have on the app, what type of revenue it can generate? Um, well, that's a really good question, and I don't have an answer for that. Um, I know millions of people use use Tinder and, and similar projects, so um, let's just say if we let's just say five million. Five five million. That's a decent. That's a decent. User five, five, five million. Five million users, and we call the project a success. <laughs> oh, that would definitely be a success that's for sure uh, I would be able to change my mind also for like a million users or half a million users that would be a good fucking start honestly <laughs> okay. yeah cool alright fair enough well I, I will uh, open up to a Q&A now but for the purposes of YouTube I'll uh, uh, end the recording there just um, want to say thanks a lot for joining us is there any closing statements that you'd like to make? So, um, yeah, first of all, I want to thank each and everybody 
um, for spending the, time, the last hour here with us. Um, I know I did sometimes a crap job in talking. Uh, I want to apologize to everybody for that. And um, yeah, if you want to give us a chance, um, we got some some nice white whitelist spots uh, to give away uh, at the end of this. And um, just just keep an eye out on us. Uh, out, uh, an eye out on us. Yeah. Perfect. So um, we're gonna we're gonna surprise you guys. I'm telling you. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Harry. Appreciate you joining us. No problem, bro.